second thing we talked about was a hole. A hole is created when you have zero over zero, which we call an indeterminate form. The third thing we're going to talk about are another type of asymptote. Okay? We've got vertical asymptotes and we have slant asymptotes. And that means you have a vertical or a slant line of a graph which the function approaches but never touches. Okay? Horizontal asymptotes, technically you can cross them. You don't usually, but technically you can. Vertical asymptotes, you don't ever touch them. Okay? You never touch a vertical asymptote. Um, it is not actually part of the graph, even though if you plug these into your calculator, a lot of times your calculator will graph that vertical line. It's actually an invisible line that when we sketch the graphs, we represent on the dotted line. Okay, that's very important. A handful of people always still draw it just like it shows up on the calculator, and that is not correct. Okay? We call these a non-removable discontinuity because it's not just a single little bitty point that we can fix. Okay, like a removable discontinuity or a hole, this is a non-removable discontinuity. Okay, we can't just remove the problem easily. So here's where vertical asymptotes come from. Uh, they come from when you divide by zero. So we set the denominator after we've canceled common factors to find our holes. We set the denominator equal to zero and we solve for x. These also show up as an error in your table. So you can't just automatically type these in the y equals and look at the table and by the error determine what's a hole and what's a vertical asymptote because they both show up as errors. So you got to know which one's which, okay, where they come from. So let's look at another example here. We'll go through the whole list and then we'll talk about the new stuff of vertical asymptotes. So this function right here, x over x cubed minus 4x, do we have a horizontal asymptote? Yes, y equals zero because the denominator is of a higher degree than the numerator. All right, now we factor. We can take an x out of the denominator and then we have the difference of perfect squares. Uh, I don't know why I wrote x squared out of the denominator. I didn't mean to do that. Just an x. We're left with x squared minus 4. So that's x plus 2 times x minus 2. So we can cancel an x. So we've got 1 over x plus 2 times x minus 2. This is our simplified version. So we canceled an x. We set that equal to 0. Our hole is at 0. When we plug that into our simplified version, 1 over 0 plus 2 times 0 minus 2, that gives us negative 1 fourth. So our whole is the point 0, negative 1 fourth. I know I did that a little fast. Are we okay with that? I plugged it into the simplified version. There's the green version there on the end plugged in zero for x. I canceled the x's. Okay. Now the vertical asymptote or vertical asymptotes, we have two in this case because after we simplify, we take what's left in the denominator and set it equal to zero and solve for x. So x plus 2 is equal to 0, x minus 2 is 0, which says that we have vertical asymptotes at both negative 2 and positive 2. You need to write them like this because they are vertical lines. Vertical lines have equations x equals a constant. Horizontal lines are y equals a constant. These are easier to remember to write this way because if you set it up I mean, it's right there. It's in your work. Okay, most people forget to write the horizontal asymptote with the y equals. Okay, let's look at the graph of this just to start getting a mental picture. Okay, you don't have to do this part yet, but I want to uh, start getting that idea in your head. X over, make sure you put the x cubed minus 4x in parentheses. Technically, you can put parentheses around the x, but you really don't need that. Okay, it's just when there's more than one term. 
Okay, now this one's really, really tiny. It really looks like a heartbeat. Um, let me zoom in a little bit. Maybe a five to five, just so that we can see the detail a little bit better. Let's look at another one. Okay, let's look at x squared plus 3x plus 2 over x minus 1. Does this have a horizontal asymptote? No, it does not. Oh, I forgot to talk about that part on the graph of the other one. Let's look at that real quick. Oh, I've still got the graph here. Okay. Notice how but sometimes that middle portion right there will cross the horizontal aspect. But n yeah, never the outside. Well, on the ends of the outside. All right, uh, let's see here. Let's factor. X plus 2 times X plus 1 on the top. X minus 1 on the bottom. This is where factoring, you've got to be careful with your factoring because if you messed up a sign, you would say that there is a hole when there is not a hole. Okay, nothing cancels here. There is no hole. So then vertical asymptote, what's left in the bottom? Well, it's x minus 1. So x equals 1 is our vertical asymptote. <coughs> mm, you may have done this in math 3. You probably did this in math 3. Some of this in math 3. Okay. It should look familiar. Okay, so notice you can have any combination of these things. Okay, the last problem had all three. This problem only had one. You can have any combination and any number of these uh, discontinuities and characteristics of these graphs. Okay, it's not exclusive, or there's not a certain set. 